Friends, colleagues, casual viewers, welcome back to the channel. It is another day, another chance at becoming a better human being. So in today's episode, we're gonna be doing things a little bit different. We've got some renovations to wrap up. We've got some admin work to do and we're gonna get into that first because it's important, it needs to get taken care of. And I guess this is just a friendly reminder through my own actions to take care of the things that you don't wanna take care of. Because if you put them off, they tend to just become bigger problems. So let's start by handling some of those. Documents, documents to get documents. These documents are a request for an FBI background check. What are they gonna find? What secrets do I have? And this is a document in which I will give my credit card information. Not gonna show you that. And it will essentially pre-clear this company to take payment to request an FBI background check and expedite the process. Because if you go straight to the FBI, it takes four to 12 weeks. And Oh, Carrie, good point. Did I explain why I'm getting it? No. Carrie is here in New Zealand on a two-year partner work visa. And what we're doing right now is we're requesting for Carrie to be here on a partnership resident visa. So it's kind of a long process. We're in the tail end of it now. We've put in the application. They're requesting some additional information. And one of the things that they need from me is a new background check and I'm gonna have to request it. So it's not as straightforward as if I were in the US, I have to fill out some paperwork, I have to send some stuff in the mail, but we'll get it all done. So let's get started. This rug needs to be pulled to about here so that it's halfway underneath these two chairs as well. I posted a photo of this space on Instagram and several different interior designers messaged me and said that I should do that because it is going up the wall there and I don't know why I did that. I totally get what they mean. I feel like it's gonna make the space feel more together. Okay. friends well we've made it back and uh, I have done all of that admin we have sent the fingerprints and we've taken care of some other little errands in town and I got a pressure washer which means we are gonna take care of the sleep out and all of that bird poo all over the front it's gonna be gone let's do it hey how is uh how's it going over here enjoying this stunning so, day. So, I don't think the vlog has met with this new little addition here. This is Ramsey. This little, this little cutie is Ramsey. He's gonna be Wilson's best friend. And he is how old? <laughs> huh? Like, probably eight days. About a week old. So he was gifted to us by our neighbors. He was one of four babies and uh, that's too many for for a mama you so uh, he is gonna be raised by us and then he will join Wilson and Wilson and Ramsey will be besties essentially hit the lottery because <laughs> he will now be a pet lamb this is a pressure washer it's your favorite childhood squirt gun on steroids. It's got power and it had a lot of work to do. I started by blasting off the slippery slime which had accumulated on the deck. It made walking around or balancing on a ladder pretty dangerous.
Once we made our way through the slime, working my way methodically down each plank of the deck, I started trying to get the bird poop off the weatherboards. Now, a lot of the poop came off, but it was actually quite persistent and a lot of the stains remained. But it's all good since I'm planning on repainting this entire building. So you do your best. And let me tell you, bird poo does not come off easily. After that, we went around to the back of the building and sprayed off all the sludge and gunk from the gutter system. I disconnected it so that the slime would flow out and not down into our water tanks. It was a great feeling getting up there and cleaning that off. Speaking of water tanks, that's where I headed next. A few months back, I spent an hour or two scraping thick layers of lichen off of the tanks with a shovel. I just didn't like the disheveled and abandoned look of our water supply overgrown with lichen. So I scraped off the majority with a shovel, but a lot of the stains remained. The pressure washer helped to get those fully off, making both of the tanks look pretty much like new. Okay, so how did you get out? You need to go back. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, well, this is definitely usually something that Carrie handles, but um, she's in there on a call, and it's time for this little creature to have its milk. Has milk six times a day at this age. Ooh, so we just pick it up, put it here. Just, ooh, oh, come here, come here. Likes to back up. Too cute. To be honest, I was not planning on doing the deck as well, but I have the tool here, so I might as well. And uh, I'm really looking forward actually to getting this all dried out and then restaining it, and it'll look like a brand new dick. And you've got an old, slimy, dirty dick. You've got to clean it. So that's what we did today. We we went and we got uh, got our dick nice and clean. House looks clean too, gave that a little spray down and the deck looks like new. House looks clean. Okay friends, well it's the next day and we are back at the sleep out. We've got a big job to do and we're gonna see what we can accomplish. I'm actually really happy first off with just how much of that like sludge and grime we were able to get off of the deck and now it's like not slippery which is fantastic another issue that was happening was that the water from the deck which was soaked would uh because the deck was actually touching the weatherboards like in that little corner uh, it would be soaking up into the weatherboards and then soaking through onto the other side which is obviously a huge problem so first step in solving that I took my saw and I cut a gap between the deck and the weatherboards which will essentially stop the moisture that is soaking into the deck when it rains from going up into the weatherboards and kind of you know underlying the uh, foundation of the building but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get the gutters up and this is something that I have never done before. And what we'll be doing is we're gonna be taking these, which are the little, the little holders for the gutter, and we're gonna be installing those along the grooved fascia. So you install one on the far end, and then you uh, need to measure where the bottom of it sits, and then you go to the other side, the other end of the grooved fascia, and for every 10 meters, there needs to be a fall of at least five millimeters so that when the water comes off of the roof and into the gutter, it drains instead of just pooling, 
which was the problem that was happening previously is that there was not that five mil drop and so the water was just pooling at the joins of the gutter and then it was dripping down and affecting the uh, the deck and then getting into the weatherboards and causing all sorts of problems so we're going to try to remedy that by doing this properly so as you can see there i have the first of the mounts installed and that's going to be the high side so that's flush right up against the top of the groove fascia and then right at the base of it i've put a nail in and what i'll do is i'm going to connect a chalk line to that nail i'm going to run it the length of the grooved fascia this right here is the chalk line you can see it's blue there and then that's retractable so i'll hook it onto the nail there and then we'll run it the length and then once it's taut you just pull back on it and go ding, and it leaves the mark of the line which will be where we will put the rest of the, um, the little hangers for the gutters. So we do those every 300 mil because it's a 10 meter long gutter system. Let's get into it. Now the chalk line took me a few goes. Since it was the first time I had used it, the string wasn't too chalky. Here we go. And sections of the line didn't show up. So I had to retract 10 meters of string highly similar to reeling in a fish, shake it up and give it another go. Thankfully, it worked the second time. After that, I installed the hangers for the far end, making sure there was a five mil minimum drop. I did 10 mil just to be sure that it drained and I made sure that the downpipe fit in before I started the rest of the anchors. I installed each anchor every 300 millimeters, making sure that the bottom was flush to the chalk line. Also, that little fold-out measuring stick was super handy for this job. All right, well, the weather is starting to turn. We've got clouds on the horizon. I've got one section installed and we're gonna see about getting this next bit up. Hopefully it all works and we can get this all installed and sealed and done before the weather starts raining. friends well it's in it's done we have successfully installed the guttering and it looks pretty good now you know the main question is if it will properly function but um, I'm pretty happy with how that came together really just the last thing to do in here is next dry day that we have. We'll get in and we'll paint the timber as well as the, um, the cement board suffetes. And then we'll get a light and we'll get that installed there. And then that should be done. Obviously we're gonna repaint the whole, the whole building. Um, the deck is, is looking a lot nicer. It's not like a slip and slide, which is good. And I got some deck stain so we'll be staining the the deck um, outside the house as well as out front here in the sleep out i don't know if this deck is gonna stay with us or if we're gonna get rid of it but for now it'll stay but i'm i'm pretty happy you know things are things are coming together out here so slow and steady progress beats no progress at all all right friends welcome back it's the next day and we have good news and bad news. The good news is everything's still there. The bad news is 
This main piece, I'm reusing the guttering that was already up on this building, but the main piece, it's kind of bowed. And why that's bad is because the whole idea is that you have a slight angle on the guttering so that the water flows with gravity and makes its way off of the roof and away from the building. But because that middle one is kind of bowed up in the middle, like it means that water is pooling. I don't know how bad it is because it hasn't really rained yet. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it up. And if we need to come back to it at a later date, maybe later in the summer when the weather is like drier and better, then we can. I hope I don't have to come back. I hope it's just a little minimal thing and it's not something that needs to completely redo this project again. But if it is, then we'll cross that bridge at a later date. What we're gonna do today, we have sunshine for the next few hours. So I'm gonna try to get a coat of paint up on the interior with the timber and the safetes, which uh, are not painted yet. People bring up a good point, which is, you know, you can paint these things on the ground beforehand. Um, and yeah, you can, but you can also just paint them up there. It's a thing of preference. I wanted to just get the material and get it into place um, and then deal with painting because I'm gonna repaint this whole building, this whole facade. So if the edges are a little bit sloppy, it's all good because I'm gonna come in and, and do a repaint of this whole, all of the black parts of the building. This has been a journey. This project has been a journey and it's not quite done, but if we get the paint up, it'll make it that much closer. And then we'll see how the gutters work in the next big rain, which is gonna happen later in the week. And if we need to, we'll come back to this again at a future date. But until then, let's get painting. All right, now we're on the other side of the sleep out, the garden side. And this side has semi-functional guttering. It has semi-functional saffetes, but uh, there are still the gaps between the saffete and the weatherboard, which is letting flies and bugs and stuff get in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another piece of this timber, hi Carrie. Cheers. She's feeding the baby lamb. And we're gonna run uh, this timber all along that inner gap between the feet and the weatherboards. And then that'll be one step closer to having the building sealed off from easy access from pests. So let's get to work. All right, well, there we go, friends. This side is sealed up. It's looking pretty good. We'll just run a bead of silicon in on either side of the new timber just to plug up the hole even better. And then um, once that's dry, we'll, we'll put a coat of paint on it and then that should be good on this side. So it's time to break for lunch and Carrie's just come over and told me she's been working away because it's the very beginning of spring, the very end of winter, it's time to uh, start thinking about what we're gonna plant in the garden. So that's what Carrie's been up to. Look at that. What do we got? We've got all organic seeds. Uh -huh. I did three trays with basil. That's okay. the Italian in me that wants to make sure that we've got basil covered. Uh -huh. We've got broccoli, rocket salad or arugula, spring onion, parsley, and some celeriac. Ooh, and celeriac, nice. Yeah. I also planted some marigold flowers in here. Okay. Actually, I think it's in this one. Yeah, this one I haven't planted yet, but this one has marigold for Ooh. the pollinators. Nice. Always good to have some 
flowers that love bees. Uh huh. Flowers that bees love, and yeah, they probably they love probably bees love too. Each other. Yeah. yeah. But that is what I meant. <laughs> yeah. This looks great. Good job. Thanks. So we'll keep an eye on these guys the next month. See how they do. Usually, I like to wait till about four weeks or so. So one of the next things we're gonna do is fill in the gaps between the window frame and the weatherboards. This is not what you want to be happening on the side of your windows. And that is the case here. You can see there's really nothing stopping anything from getting in there, including moisture. So we're gonna use Gorilla Pro Expanding Foam. And uh, we'll just put the foam in there. And then uh, it will expand. It will fill the space. And then we'll just let it dry and cure. And then you just come in and you cut it off. And we'll probably end up putting a piece of timber along each side here just to, uh, to seal it up a little bit better. But in the meantime, it's necessary step in the right direction. You may also be wondering why I'm usually wearing either eye protection, ear protection, or mouth protection. And that's because pretty much everything that we use to build our homes can injure you in some way. Uh, this one has got a lot of wonderful hazards. Extremely flammable, harmful if inhaled, causes skin irritation, causes serious eye irritation, may cause allergy or asthma symptoms or breathing difficulties if inhaled. Suspected of causing cancer, may cause harm to breastfed children, causes damage to organs through prolonged or repeated inhalation, may cause respiratory irritation, toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects. Lovely. We will uh, use protective equipment when we apply these things and we will be careful to avoid spilling things. And that's the best we can do. Okay friends, well that brings us to the end of this week's video. It has been a journey trying to hammer that sleep out into an acceptable condition, but I really think we are making some great progress. And finally, it feels like the exterior of the building is pretty much completed. There's still a few more things to handle on the back side of the building, but couldn't get around to it for this week's video, so we'll have to save it for next week's. There's a lot happening, a lot of fun things, adventures on the horizon, so stay tuned, and I've got a lot of content coming at you in the near future. Additionally, my wife and I have been on top of it with the podcast, Soul Sugar Podcast. You can find it anywhere you listen to your podcasts. So make sure you go over there and give it a listen. If you enjoy it, don't forget to, uh, to rate it. Five stars, please. Always helps with uh, the podcast rankings. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and we'll see you in next week's video. Peace.